Welcome back everyone, I'm the Redstone Warper here, and today I'd like to show you a tunnel bore modification I made based on a design by a YouTuber named Borkin, which was based on a design that I believe was from El Mango. Um, in his video, he made a expandable tunnel bore that you could expand infinitely out. It had some intermediary stages where mine is just a little bit shorter, meaning that if you're needing to clear out a space to put this, you don't have to clear out so much space. And so, I just have this nice little repeatable instant line here. It is 18 blocks long, so it's just a little bit shorter, but especially if you don't have a beacon, every block counts. So all you have to do to launch this forward is first we're going to assemble it um, and the schematic in the description will also be unassembled so you can just build it exactly and then run it the first time and it will be correct. Then from there on you can just keep hitting this this uh, note block there and start tunnel boring through uh, whatever blocks you need to tunnel bore through. And it will look a little something like this. Now, probably most of you have already seen one of these machines in very similar light does, but for everyone who has never seen these machines before and is a little bit confused about how they work, especially this instant flying machine wire here, like I was when I first started working on flying machines, I'm going to do a little explanation here. So basically what's happening is because this powered rail is basically powered, which should be powering this TNT. The moment you update the TNT, it will ignite and explode. But if you push it at the same time that this happens, it actually duplicates the TNT, budding this redstone, or budding the TNT again. And because of the slime block here, the resulting TNT that just got the entity version of TNT will then actually shoot out across these blocks onto the ancient debris. Because the ancient debris is blast proof, it doesn't blow up the ancient debris. And then this is just to cheat the piston push limit because when you push this observer into this piston, it pushes this forward, which updates this observer using the uh, piston to pull it back. And just to demonstrate, if I were to place a block right here, it updates the TNT. It falls through the cobblestone wall because it clips into the block. And so by updating the TNT, it causes it to explode, which is not what you want to do. Now before I explain how this instant wire works and why it's so useful, we must first understand why it's really helpful. Uh, if we just build a flying machine like this, where each piston gets extended and pushes it out the blocks in front of it by the observer behind it, we can get all four of these pistons to be timed at the exact same time. If I hit the note block, you can see that they all push at the same time. But there's a couple issues with this. One, it's a lot slower because it takes time for each of these pistons to extend, and if you have something really huge like a world eater, this tree is going to get very big very fast. Which is why something like this, where you can fly the machine and the entire setup pushes forward at the same time, is very useful. You can see that all of these pistons get fired at exactly the same time, and you can extend this however far you want. Now, I've prepared a little demonstration over here of why this works. And to, you can see, if we power the pistons, it takes a little while for each piston to extend and then the next powering all the way around to the light. But when you depower piston, it instantly unpowers. So if I remove the power source, all of them retract at the same time. So the way this flying machine works here is, and we can remove this extra stuff right here, uh, which is to push the flying machines forward. If we just remove all that, you can see that we basically have this system where when we move this redstone block, and in fact we can just get rid of this machine right here, when that piston pulls forward, it moves this whole slime block structure underneath, which moves this redstone block, which then in turn would remove the next redstone block if we were continuing the machine out over here. So because all of these are moved at the same time, and depowered instantly, the whole entire line will do so. And of course the slime block, or the honey blocks up here with the redstone block on top, is so that we can pull this piston back as soon as this piston moves. So you can see, if you watch closely, that when this piston gets pushed over here, 
it gets updated and since it's quasi powered over here it pushes forward and then this honey block structure pulls this piston back so that you can continue flying it down the road. So I hope you enjoyed this short little video of my improved wall tunnel bore as well as my explanation to how instant wire works and why it's so useful. As a side note, the reason why instant wire is very important for this machine is if the timings are off between the pieces of TNT, it will actually cause them to be knocked around by each other and cause the machine to break. Thanks for watching everyone. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a like on the video. And if you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment down below or join my Discord where we can have more in-depth discussion. This has been the Redstone Warper, warping redstone one machine at a time. Thanks for watching.